Welcome to Mock the Week, I'm Dara O'Brien. Now we're very proud here at Mock the Week of how we tackled many of the big issues this series. Elves, releasing Catholic children into the wild and luring Saddam into the Big Brother house. <laughs> All the big stories. But here's some stuff you won't have seen before, plus some of our favourite moments. Good evening, hello, Happy New Year, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Mock the Week, I'm Dara O'Brien. Well, since we've seen you last... Uh, oh, ha, 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 fuck, uh, shouldn't, have, shouldn't have just done that in a chatty, improvised kind of a way. I've managed to lose where I was. Uh, <laughs> Time now for, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board, six categories. Gina, what would you like? I'm going to go for social affairs. OK, social affairs, the answer is... 265 million. Gina, what is the question? Uh, how much did Wayne Rooney's girlfriend spend yesterday in New Look? <laughs> is is it, it what is the worst ever opening guess in The Price is Right? <laughs> <laughs> is it two rabbits went down a hole a week ago? How many rabbits are in that hole now? <laughs> <laughs> if, a, if a peerage costs 50 grand, how much is King of the World? <laughs> Is it how many injuries has Johnny Wilkinson had? <laughs> if bird flu, if bird flu mu mutates on Monday, how many will be dead by Friday? <laughs> is, it, is it when the machines finally take over, how many humans will die in the first 24 hours in what the machines will later refer to <laughs> as the Great Adjustment? <laughs> A slightly it... less apocalyptic one, by any chance. <laughs> so let me how... give you a hint. It's not about a number of deaths, all right? Uh... How many bottles does the average woman have in the bathroom? <laughs> so how much is the uh, super casino license is worth? Uh, sort of, yes. How much would it cost yeah. to build the super casino? That's probably closer to it. The question I was looking for is how much will now be invested in yeah. developing the site of Britain's first super casino. Yeah. This is the news that the city of Manchester, the 16 to 1 <coughs> outsider, won the race to become the site of the country's first Las Vegas style super casino. £265 million pounds will be spent in a rundown area of the city. In Manchester, there's going to be an additional element of gambling as you try and walk home with your winnings. <laughs> <laughs> It'd just be great to hear, you know, all the new people dealing. How great would that be? Hit me, dealer. Making <laughs> <laughs> Manchester sound as if it's some sort of urban wasteland. It Manchester. is an urban it's wasteland. Not, it's not an urban it's wasteland. It's a horrible man. place. No, it's Manchester's, <laughs> Manchester's lovely. It's silly. not. I was it's held up at really... knife point by two really weak junkies who couldn't even hold on to me. <laughs> and to be fair, this is coming from a man from Glasgow. <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> Do you know the other bit of the gambling, the other bit of the gambling law that's seen this super casino though, is that they are now getting rid of fruit machines, and this is a tragedy, in uh, fast food outlets, late night fast food outlets. So kebab shops, that's the closest they ever got to fruit in a kebab <laughs> shop. <laughs> How's that going to happen? Well, the bizarre, on, on, the, on the fruit thing or whatever, it, apparently there was statistics revealed last week that the average British family every week spends £3.60 on gambling versus £2.80 on fruit. <laughs> And the really cruel thing is that when three cherries appear on the machine, <laughs> they're not going to recognise them. They're not going to <laughs> three it, purples! It, I got yeah. three purples! <laughs> I'll get money for purple! Do three hemorrhoids! There's also an opportunity, though, because I, I reckon the middle class don't gamble, and there's an opportunity to get middle class. If you had, like, you know, oh, God, look, I've got three kumquats. <laughs> I've got a kumquat and ugly fruit and some rocket. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it can be... It'd be perfect. It's Middle horrible, class fruit machines. The way they've demonised the, the working class this week, all the papers like, oh, poor working class, they won't be able to stop themselves from gambling, they'll be selling their children. <laughs> you know, it's just that they won't be able to stop it. And, you, and everyone's sort of really scared about the kids, that they can become like these weird little addicts. But the thing is, they've got, I was looking into it, and they've got those little ballrooms that, that you remember you used to have when you went shopping. So the kids are going to have a fantastic time. Some of the happiest moments of my childhood have been slung into one of them. Do you know what I mean? The little oh, ball... Oh, I thought you meant like a ballroom. Da -da 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 -da. 
You as a tiny child on the feet of the happiest time of my childhood. I'll be trained now in case you grow up to be a washed up celebrity. One thing we know for sure is that people in Blackpool will be hanging themselves today, whether or not they've heard about the Super Casino. <laughs> hey, don't you clap that right there. <laughs> Telling you now, <laughs> right? You're just... Although it's like a good idea to maybe to start off. It's like oxygen to the flame, ladies <laughs> yeah, and gentlemen. <laughs> if you keep doing that, I'll throw a few more... Put them, <laughs> well, you know, you right, know, if one at a time. <laughs> No professional host would do this in a sweeter way, but you mm. fucking calm the fuck down the lot of us. We have plenty of time. Ed Bird, what it, did you want to say? Well, just, At least wait till I'd finish speaking. <laughs> it's Otherwise, the it it show, doesn't... Ed Bird, what did you want to say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is it? It doesn't go. Ed, what did you want to say? <laughs> it doesn't matter. No, shut up. This is great. I'm is loving this. Yeah. Go. No, you shut up. No, you go. <laughs> Class of children today. I don't know what to do. Yeah, I've written the word boobless on my calculator. <laughs> Ed, I apologise. What did you want to say? It's really not worth it now. Fine. It was, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, we shall move on. In this round, one of them takes on the role of a person in the news addressing the media, while the other translates what they really mean. Frankie, you are Osama bin Laden, <laughs> making his latest address to the world. Hugh, you'll tell us what he really means. <laughs> Infidels! <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Try as hard as you like. I am somewhere that you will never find me. I died five years ago. <laughs> is the only way for Al-Qaeda to spread our message. We tried T-shirts, <laughs> but the overheads were monstrous. <laughs> there seems to be no end to the indignities that the West piles upon us. I've been offered the lead in Chicago. <laughs> I need you to listen to our message now. Although, if you download the podcast, you'll get a special bonus interview with Vernon Kerr. <laughs> Here in the Tora Bora Mountains, we have managed to adapt and enjoy life. Every evening, we play Stars in Their Eyes. <laughs> Last night, I was Cat Stevens. <laughs> I rocked. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this year's Oscars. I had the original idea for United 93. <laughs> Frankie and you, ladies and gentlemen. What are politicians clamouring to condemn this week? Oh, it's uh, Saddam's um, death. It is the hanging of Saddam. They, yes. could, they couldn't have made it more undignified. They couldn't have made it more undignified if they'd hung him from a swing ball. <laughs> <laughs> you, Saddam, oh, yes! <laughs> There was some good news, wasn't there? Because uh, the actual charges against him for his second court case, they've been dropped. They've been dropped. Yeah. So that they've was good of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they were thinking of charging him for those as well. Double death, maybe, but no. At worst, a mixed week for Saddam Hussein. I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> 2007 has not gone well for no. me so far. No. How many of you actually watch this on YouTube? I just genuinely. Oh, yeah. Man. It was yeah. amazing. There was it was horrendous. It was disgusting. I only gave it two stars. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. true. It was, it was actually John Prescott was the person who came out and was the, the person to condemn it. Yeah. Well, that's pretty bad if, if the only sort of moral conscience in your nation is a man who has done things to his body that has turned his internal organs into patty. <laughs> a man who couldn't wear a tie and a belt on the same day or he'd turn into sausages. Brilliant. He's the moral heart of our country. What's, yeah. what's, what's really interesting about it, everyone was really upset about Blair going on holiday with the Bee Gees, but this, this week there's actually a law going through that gives the major oil companies in the world 75% uh, of the profits in Iraq for the next 30 years. And you kind of go, well, that's the thing to get angry about. That's sort of proof that the war was illegal, isn't it? Yes, yeah. yes, it is. It's not it's really funny, sort of, though. in another way, it's also the proof that the war was kind of worth it. At least we got <laughs> something out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thousands of soldiers yes, yes. just to murder some beardy guy. Now, <laughs> oil, that's worth a lot of money, I've heard. <laughs> Let's see, Let's see him like say that in front of a load of Guardian readers. <laughs> <laughs> Kill him! <laughs> Throw organic beans at him! <laughs> <laughs> I'm too weak. 
I'm too weak. I reckon it would have been good just to have put him in the Big Brother house. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it, it's been rubbish this series. I've got day three, Jermaine and Saddam and me walking towards the diary. Probably <laughs> <laughs> he would have come in through a trap door in the ceiling. Hey, <laughs> it would have been worth it just for the surprise on his face. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on. <laughs> Wait a minute, what's Jay's mother doing here? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I am in house. <laughs> OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is sport. Who wants to come in last? Andy Parsons. <laughs> I should, of course, tell you I have had a couple of lessons at the David Lloyd Tennis Centre recently. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now Britain's number six. <laughs> <laughs> One of the few sports we were world-class at, fox hunting, we went and banned. <laughs> Not that you could call it much of a sport, could you? I never saw the fox winning. <laughs> House of Commons described fox hunting as an inefficient form of pest control. And that probably didn't come as a surprise to you. If you've got a mouse in your house, you put down a bit of poison, don't you? You don't get dressed up in your Sunday best, <laughs> get pissed off your tits and start chasing after it with a pack of cats. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andy Barsons. OK, let's spin the wheel again. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to win the race? The next topic is Scotland. <laughs> Frankie. <laughs> Scotland is officially the most obese nation in Europe. You'd have to wonder what we'd be like if it wasn't for all the heroin. They were talking about making the next Bond Scottish. I was glad they didn't, you know, cos Bond was always travelling to all these different countries. If he was Scottish, he'd never get out of the duty-free. <laughs> Come on, Bond, we've only got 18 hours to save the world. It's all very well, Q. Have you seen the price of these little bottles of Stella? <laughs> <laughs> always drinking, Bond. Never actually gets drunk. It would have been good to see it just once. Try to phone Q in his ring. I fucking love you, man! <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what Fred has been left with. Let's spin the wheel. The topic is etiquette. <laughs> Fitch. <laughs> I think there's been a deterioration in etiquette, there's been a deterioration in manners, and there's been a deterioration in language. And as a Scot, um, you know, we're often accused of using the F word too much. And, you know, that could be true. I think, though, it suits the pattern of our voice. It suits the rhythm of our speech. It actually fits in quite nicely. But I think I have found the epitome of the overuse of the F word. It happened at a St. Johnson versus Partick Thistle football match, and the detail is vital in padding out the routine. <laughs> <laughs> It was in uh, McDermott Stadium, a stadium that can hold 10,000 people, uh, they've been told. And <laughs> five minutes into the second half, something happened on the pitch that the man five rows in front of me was not at all happy about, and he stood up and he pointed at the pitch and he shouted, Fucking! <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Sometimes boo just isn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> on the um, on the travel front, what caused this particular disaster in New Zealand? Was it elves? It wasn't elves. <laughs> nor <laughs> was it a wrathful giant. Was it amazing? It wasn't. It's a, a milk, derailed lorry. A it's, it's, a it's a milk. A it's a milk tanker. It's a milk tanker. Ploughed through <laughs> two buildings. The first two buildings there. And why did it crash? Was it looking for a cow? It wasn't. <laughs> no, it was, it was That's not the way they work. They don't. The milk tankers don't track cows across fields. <laughs> had some guy. Had some guy just poured himself out cornflakes, realised he didn't have any milk, and was possessed of incredible oh. telepathic powers. <laughs> <laughs> what well, was that? Like, 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 just... like Magneto, but for milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could lure milk towards him. <laughs> we need an action, we need an action replay of it. It was a lovely moment. I think you. I, I just remembered something. But show uh, them what you did. It was I fantastic. Went, you went, went, and then went like that, <laughs> and you were <all> talking. <laughs> did I really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You well, saw... I do that kind of thing yeah, the whole great. time. That's entirely me. Do it again. 
Right. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's quite cool, but this better be good. My, my self-image is not the sort of person who does that, and I'm very, I'm very glad. Change. That should take. Yeah, 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 yeah well, I'm glad that I'm doing it in an involuntary way rather than affecting to do it. Yeah. Yes. At the end of it, just that go. Was a Shazam. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's taking it too far. I don't far. think. I think okay, you can do well, it next time. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, no, I'd remembered why he crashed. Why did he crash? Because. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Why did they crash the truck? Start again. He, um, uh, he, the guy, the milk guy, yeah. choked on a lolly. He did I choke on a lolly. <laughs> yes. He yes. Yes. And the uh, uh, and the people inside the house choked on a lorry. Yeah. <laughs> what, I love about, what I love about this photo is like. 30 seconds before that happened, there were three houses and a bloke in a caravan who was feeling a bit shit because everybody else had a house. <laughs> <laughs> now the bloke in the caravan's going, yes! <laughs> I've got a caravan and a lifetime supply of milk. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, it, he did, he choked on, he choked on a boiled sweet, which in that was part that of the world. They, they call, no, they call um, sweets lollies. <laughs> in, Crazy. Funny. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. nowhere near as funny as a boiled sweet. <laughs> <laughs> there was nobody in the first house, there was nobody in the second house, but in the third house there was a Just man right. who was, uh, was, who was sitting, he was sitting in, his, in his chair, and do you know why he was there? No. He'd, he'd a broken foot, so he was recuperating from a broken foot, broke, came yeah. to the, t the wall of his house, and he said to himself, he had a moment where he went, I'm not going to be able to get away from this, because <laughs> uh, I've got a broken foot, and the truck <laughs> slammed into him, broke his other leg. <laughs> What like, could have been worse would have been if he was also lactose intolerant. <laughs> <laughs> we now play a round called Royal Commentary. We'll play in a recent piece of footage featuring the royal family and ask you to provide a commentary. This week, the Queen visits a bus depot. Oh, and here she comes, Her Majesty the Queen. She always likes to arrive as unobtrusively as possible. <laughs> Ten points if you can run over the man in the suit, she's saying, but no. Well, security is high. Every bus in Britain has been cancelled, and now <laughs> she's meeting the conductor. <laughs> he seems to be carrying a sword. That's not normal. Perhaps his route goes through Peckham. <laughs> well, one of the rules of a royal meeting is that somebody in the greeting party has to be dressed as a character from Trumpton, <laughs> and there he is, shaking the hand of the Prince of Wales. The Queen now off for a walk. This is rather unusual. She normally likes to roll a blade. Uh, <laughs> but now she's uh, boarding the bus. Thank God for that, says the driver. I've been waiting here for over four hours. <laughs> do you go to Buckingham Palace, says the Queen. No, we don't go to Buckingham Palace. Well, do you go anywhere near Buckingham Palace? <laughs> no, I'm afraid we don't go anywhere near Buckingham Palace. You really should have looked at the front of the bus. <laughs> We go to Peckham, you silly old fool. <laughs> is Peckham anywhere near Buckingham Palace? No, it isn't. I think you'd probably just better get off the bus. <laughs> you need the 268. <laughs> oh, here's uh, Prince Philip, having a laugh and a joke. I think some pigeon doo-doo on your shoulder. <laughs> He's checking this man, looking at his credentials. Are you sure you're legal? You look a bit dusky. <laughs> And now the presentation of the bouquet. Yes, of course, this is traditional. A small child presents with the bouquet. The child, in this instance, not very happy about that. No, he was absolutely assured that he would be meeting Madonna. And she would whisk him away to a life of pleasure and luxury. How disappointing to be left with Sax Coburg. Now, they're off back to the palace for an afternoon of corgi baiting. Oh, interesting. Down there, bottom right-hand corner, Greater London Atlas. Little known fact, the Queen is currently doing the knowledge. <laughs> well done, you. Actually, the greatest problem the, um, that doctors say GPs face, apparently, is that people go to the doctor with one problem and then do a, while I'm here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Three months ago, uh, yeah. my leg did a kind of a thing. And I'm going, oh, come on. I'm not, I'm not giving you an MOT, for Christ's sake. Come here with it. My mum did that to me when I was 15. I had really, it was horrible. I had really bad acne. And I went to the doctors with my mum. It's cleared up beautifully, by the Thank way. Thank you very much, right? <laughs> Thanks, lovely. Oh. <laughs> that was that. On your hand, soft. Are you going to get. <laughs> Could we please oh, get. Are you going to get an advert right. for Clearasil in a minute? Is this it? Um, no, but it was, I was sort of sat there, I'm quite embarrassed, and she said, oh, yeah, about acne. And then my mum went, while we're here, one of his nipples is bigger than the other. <laughs> and he sat there going, 
And so you go, take your top off. So I was just stood there, kind of going, oh, it is big. Mm. Now, is it markedly, no, 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 we're not it markedly mm. bigger than the other? Well, it's, it's, it's fine it's now. Yeah, yeah, Are you sure? Is it not? It's, what, show. <laughs> <laughs> it should be noted, by the way. Uh, sorry, if you, yeah, if you, that there one, you see? Slightly bigger than that one. <laughs> the ball's ah. slightly bigger. Well, it's two different canets. Everything but everything I've heard about the West Country is true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was, oh, it was properly horrible. There, and there was, there was other stuff I'm not going to mention on TV. But was, she listed off a whole CV of my problems. Because I used to want... Because I had really bad spots, so I went for a weird stage of, like, doing some of my hair. When I went to bed like that, I used to put pants on my head. Because <laughs> I thought keeping the hair away from my greasy head would protect me. And she told the doctor that as well. So like, <laughs> and now you've told the whole yeah. country! <laughs> so there's a... Well, somewhere, how long, how long somewhere in the West Coast. There's a 15-year-old kid now, just... <gasps> <laughs> No, there's a 15 year old killer going, but look at as beautiful as skin is yeah, now. I'm going to carry on really with this really particular. He's, he's too good. I got hair only on one side of my chest. <laughs> hey, my brother! For about two years, <laughs> when I was 14, I got hair here yeah. and none here. <laughs> at all. Do you, Do you know, know what that work? means? Do you know what that no. means? It means. You're a freak. <laughs> <laughs> In this round, one of them takes on the role of a person in the news addressing the media, while the other translates what they really mean. Frankie, you are <laughs> former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan making his farewell New Year speech as he hands over to his successor. Hugh, you will tell us what he really means. <laughs> Can I do that again? Can I do that again? Yeah. Without burping midway to the hotel. <laughs> Do you reckon the Queen of England has ever pulled her bed covers up so that just her head is showing and just gone, Philip, look at me, I'm a stamp. <laughs> so, <laughs> bath time arse disaster. Yes, again, a lot yes, of video. I have to say, the answer I was looking for was by my bathroom. <laughs> Paper. Yeah, it was good, actually. <laughs> it was a good paper. They, they just went in a different angle with the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The one I really wouldn't have is uh, Botox. I can't see the point of that. And it also scares me, because if you get paralysed, your face gets paralysed, and if it gets paralysed at the wrong moment, if you go, oh, so I'm not meant to smile. <laughs> if, for example, well, the wind should change. change. Yeah. Yeah, that's... All, the statistics after this week were that <laughs> all types of cosmetic surgery went up except for one. It's actually is, it is difficult to do the show while your face is stuck like that. Is, is there any chance you could now stop miming Botox? Yeah. Uh, that'd be great. <laughs> Hugh has to be careful because this week I discovered, I don't know if you know what slash fiction is, <laughs> but it's basically gay fiction on the internet where they have people like, you know, Captain Kirk and Spock shagging each other. And there's one of me and Hugh. <laughs> I don't know why you're question. doing that, Hugh, because you're the receiver. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to make it easier for you. <laughs> and the most offensive part of it is when they describe my pubes as being ginger. <laughs> Look at that. Just sorted it out. You just, you just pulled the fucking cable out. I could have done that. <laughs> You supposed to have a flu buddy that you've got to pair up with somebody and they'll deliver the injection to you if, if, if needs be. Right? Exactly, yeah. but if it was my mates, they'd just pop a bit of Viagra in or something like that. Yeah, you're going to die, have some donuts, have some fun. Swing <laughs> <laughs> it on yourself, see how many you can get. Donuts? With see Viagra? Get... What the hell are you doing? Well, <laughs> you're you're so going to be there, I'm, I'm nearly dying, and I'm flinging them gently on. Ring donuts, not jam <laughs> donuts. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah, a beast. But putting them? It's how it's I'm nearly dead, Frankie! Can I not have some fun? <laughs> Find that woman, leave the pastries alone! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to walk past the Greg's now. How horrific would that be? <laughs> People, there he is, animal. Just looking for that. <laughs> I'll just have to wander in. Gingerbread man, please. <laughs> just turn him around. It could Lovely. be worse. <laughs> I'm getting a real note on my ear going, could we not say that Bernard Matthews takes an enormous amount of glee in the culling of... You know, various things that... He doesn't take glee in it, he sits on a throne of turkey skulls. <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is unlikely lines to find... <laughs> <laughs> could I please say the damn topic first? <laughs> Back to your starting position, thank you very much. <laughs> Only on the last part of the final word. 
on likely lines to find in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul was on his road to Damascus when he got hit by a helicopter gunship. <laughs> An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. This is the weirdest car boot sale I've ever been to. <laughs> anyway, I'm rambling on. <laughs> <laughs> he's not the Messiah, he's a very naughty boy! <laughs> and God said, let there be light. Sponsored by PowerJet. <laughs> A man who lies with another man should be stoned. It helps, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> and God said, right, that's the 14 commandments. Now, will you remember all those? <laughs> <laughs> that's very good. <laughs> Table for 12, Jesus. <laughs> I can do two sixes at 8.30. <laughs> And on the eighth day, God created a magic talking leopard and forgot all about us. <laughs> <laughs> and Mary said God had given her a child, so Joseph went and joined Fathers for Justice. <laughs> it rained for 40 days and 40 nights, although Thames Water still had a hosepipe ban. <laughs> St Paul's third epistle to the Corinthians. Dear Corinthians, I've written to you twice now. No reply. I don't know how you do things in Corinth, but where I'm from, that's a bit rude. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... What a TV chef would never say. Hmm. Sucked and stuffed, all that remains is to kill it. <laughs> Welcome to one fa- <laughs> And here, what you want to do is put a little bit of the brown mixture in the tin and then sprinkle a little bit of hash on the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> these Korean meatballs really are the dog's bollocks. <laughs> if you're wondering how to get the perfect skin on your parsnips, then you're mental. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Delia Smith, and today we're going to cook a panda. <laughs> <laughs> are we, am I invisible in this fucking jacket? <laughs> I think you... you do. So, I've marinated it for half an hour, seared it for 15 seconds, and now I'm drizzling it on my buttocks. <laughs> you just need two things to make this dish. What you need is a takeaway menu and a phone. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight on Russian cookery, cyanide, polonium and a crab stuffed with explosives. <laughs> It's not going to be worth it now, is it? <laughs> 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 <laughs>